everybody, I'm Joey Hungerford. Welcome back to the channel for a Simple Church Equipping series. I've planted a church. I'm currently moving to another church to do more ministry. And I wanted to explore some of the common elements that help groups thrive. Whether you're leading a Bible talk, a small group, a house church, these are some of the common elements that will help you be successful. And a common discipleship method that millions of disciples have used to train all over the world, it's even been adopted by the business world, is MAL, acronym MAL, Model, Assist, Watch, Leave, or some say Launch. It isn't just delegation, it's empowerment. You see it throughout the Gospels and the Epistles, and when we see it used in simple churches, it leads to success. Uh, when untried in simple churches, at the very least, it can be a tool to reveal where you still need to grow and still need to train. We simply learn best by imitating those who are imitating Christ. I used the mall principle early on as a disciple to learn how to study the Bible with others, how to baptize, how to prayer walk, how to resolve conflict, all of these things. By being in the experience myself, learning from a guide, and then evaluating that experience, having a feedback loop on it so I could learn from failure or learn from success if it went well. And some of the things I learned were basic competencies that all disciples should know to build up the body, but some of the things I learned were more specific to my unique gifting. Either way, the more you use this training tool, disciples will be built up and thus the body will be built up in your simple church. To illustrate the mall training cycle, Remember when your parents first taught you how to ride a bike? You learned by watching them, but eventually you got on the bike and you learned by them pushing you. They weren't meant to just push you around forever though. They'd be pretty exhausted and eventually they let go and launched you out on your own. You probably crashed multiple times, but your parents didn't revert to pushing you around everywhere. They didn't revert to constantly assisting. And soon you improved and you learned some of the core competencies like coming to a stop or speeding up or going down a hill. And then it was no longer necessary for you to only ride your bike when your parents were watching. Actually, if that was the case, you probably wouldn't get very far and your bike riding would be greatly reduced to your parents' availability. You'd be bottlenecked. So with your newly mastered skills, your parents' supervision was no longer needed. Thus, through your parents' training cycle of how to ride a bike, your competency and capacity to go where you wanted on your bike was increased and brought to maturity. There's a parallel process to this training cycle when it comes to maturing disciples and building up the body of Christ. So when I first learned to study the Bible with others, I learned by watching somebody else lead the Bible study and I took notes. Then eventually I led the Bible study and they took notes. I made a lot of blunders. I needed that supervision. After the study, we would have some feedback. We talk about what could we try better next time? We'd have some troubleshooting. Once I had the basics down, my mentor backed off and watched. And once they saw that I could multiply it, teach the skill to others, they backed off completely. Here's a quote on this from Curtis Sargent. I would suggest to you that Paul was modeling and assisting when he was with the church on the first missionary journey. Or while he was in that city, he was modeling and assisting. Then when he left, he entered the watch phase. So for the modeling and assisting, other than Corinth or Ephesus, the total time in any place would have been less than six months. In Corinth and Ephesus, a bit longer. But then he would watch for an extended period of time, over a decade. And during that time, he might come back for a repeat visit. He might send a coworker to be with them. He would write a letter to them. That he's staying in touch, making sure that they're picking up what they need. But eventually, he leaves. Model, assist, watch leave. I know this can sound very organizational and technical, but I want to encourage you that what becomes organic begins as intentional. And soon this will just become second hand to you if you practice it and it becomes your lifestyle. So to break it down a little further, the mall training cycle, step one, model. We see this in the early chapters of Mark. Jesus goes on all of these fishing trips to reach people and he does all the work. The disciples are just watching. He's simply modeling what he's expecting them to soon imitate. And he takes time to explain what he is doing with his disciples as he teaches them by doing. It's an immersive environment. It's what Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, follow me as I follow Christ, a learning by doing. A learning by doing, a learning by imitating. Step number two, 
assist. This is a 50-50 leadership phase where you're asking somebody to help you or you're asking to help them. You're partnering, you're co-laboring together, sharing it. And high feedback and high encouragement is needed in this time because if somebody is new to it, they're probably going to make a lot of mistakes. They're going to need a lot of guidance in the assist phase. We see this in Mark 6 or Luke 9 with the feeding of the 5,000. Uh, there's a lot of people to be fed. The disciples have no clue how to do it. And Jesus just passes them a loaf and says, here, hand this out. <laughs> assist me. You guys can do this. And we see the same assisting with Paul in 1 Thessalonians 3, 6 as Paul sends Timothy to encourage the church to help. Step three is watch. You are sending out others to do it on their own. You see Jesus in Luke 10 send out the 72. He just watches them and then debriefs the experience afterwards. In fact, it says that Jesus didn't baptize too many people himself, but the disciples baptized others, and Jesus watched. Paul instructs Timothy in 2 Timothy 2.2 2, to entrust ministry to reliable people, entrusting them to do the very things that Paul and Timothy had modeled, and they learned by doing. So in this stage, people are doing it without your assistance, but they still have your safety net. They're just the backup. It's critical to give authority and relinquish control as Jesus gave his disciples authority in Luke 10. And if need be, allow them to fail and fail constructively. Step four is leave or launch. Trust them to make their own mistakes. This is where you're ready to bless and release somebody who's ready to do the task or lead without you watching. And as disciples are mobilized and launched here, it's critical that you start talking with them about who they can repeat the training cycle with. Who can they do mall with so that the skill, the gifting, the capacity is multiplied. Think about Jesus leaving his disciples and commissioning them in Acts 1 to go and do the things he did. Or Paul leaving the Ephesian elders in Acts 20, commissioning them to keep on preaching the word and watching out for the flock. So I would recommend for your simple church, write out a few core competencies that you think everyone should know, like how to baptize somebody, maybe how to lead a discovery Bible study, maybe how to contribute to the worship during your gathering. And then I would think of a few specialty competencies, a few things that are unique to your gifting that can contribute to the body. Maybe it's apologetics or online evangelism, or maybe you yourself can lead worship. You can use the worksheet in the blog linked in our description to write out these competencies and then use the mall training cycle to see where you are in those gifts. How have you developed them? Model, assist, watch, leave. And how are you modeling it for others? Assisting others in learning how to worship or study the Bible or baptize. Have you multiplied it beyond yourself? Thus, your capacity increases and then you can help the capacity of others to increase. And the training cycle is multiplied to multiply disciples. Lastly, check out the blog not only for that worksheet and the questions and the training cycle, but for the section on waiting. Be receptive to the Holy Spirit, pray over the idea of capacity building, and discern it with your group on how the Holy Spirit can use these principles to build up your simple church. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to check link in the description for more resources on our website. Keep equipping, keep building, and shining the light of Christ in your simple church. God bless.